this topic was the most demanded for me to record. So here we go. In this video, I am going to show you my ad account structure that I use for all my client ad accounts. And one thing to mention before we start, this structure will work for all types of budgets, starting from just a couple hundreds of dollars or a couple thousands of dollars per month to tens of thousands and if not hundreds of thousands of dollars per month. So this is how it looks the entire ad account structure. As you can see, we have only three campaigns, so it's quite consolidated. And frankly, we do not need hundreds and tens of campaigns. At this moment, for the algorithms to fully optimize our campaigns and our ad sets, it requires a more consolidated approach. And in fact, they have an entire article about it, a consolidated ad account. I will make sure I will put the link in the description so you can check that out because it's quite informative. So we'll have one campaign for retargeting, one campaign for prospecting. This is going to be our main campaign where we are going to scale and one campaign for testing. Now, all these campaigns, they are optimized for purchase because what we do when we help e-commerce owners to grow their sales, this is our main objective. We're not going after link clicks or video views, we are targeting only people who are most likely to buy, which is why we use conversions and purchase optimization. So we'll start with a prospecting testing campaign because this is the most complex one. I'm not gonna say it's like hard, but it involves more steps and involves more things to cover. So in this testing campaign, if we're just starting out and we do not have any data, well, I'm gonna have three ad sets. One is going to be broad targeting or also we can call open targeting where I just have the location and the gender, but all the other things like detailed targeting is gonna be blank. So I'm not gonna put any interest. The second one is going to be interest-based ad set. So I'm gonna use some interest that are related to the niche, to the products that we sell. For example, if it's jewelry, I'm gonna put some interest related to jewelry. And the third one is a lookalike. And the reason I want to have like different types of audiences when I'm just starting out, just to figure out which audience is going to perform the best for this particular ad account. And inside each ad set, I'm gonna have free ad creatives. So what I'm doing, I am testing at the same time the creatives and the audiences. Now, as time goes on and I know the audience that is converting the best, I'm not gonna make very frequently these audience testings, but I will focus more on the creative testings. So inside this each ad set, I'm gonna have free ad creatives. And if I, like I'm starting out and I don't know what is converting, I'm gonna have different formats, like completely different ad creatives to see what type of angle and what type of format is converting. So I'll have video, image, and carousel. And one important thing here to cover is to start with one of your best sellers because this product is proven and it's gonna be more likely to convert. The goal of this particular testing campaign where we are spending just a little money is to find out what is working so we could take those components and paste them in the scaling campaign where our budget is gonna be much, much higher. So if your ad account is brand new, then in that case, you're gonna have only two campaigns, one for prospecting and one for retargeting without the scaling one. But if you already have some data and you know the audiences and the creatives that are working, take them and paste them in a scaling campaign and increase the budget right there. So let's say that after a few days, when I come back and I see that, let's say the broad asset is working the best and it has the highest return on spend. And by the way, it doesn't only involve uh, like having a high return on spend, but also it has to have some volume in terms of sales. If that particular audience has gotten only one purchase and the return on spend is high, that is not a good signal yet to put it in the scaling campaign. What you're looking at is making sure that you get at least three to five purchases and the return is like 2.5 and above. That is a much, much healthier signal that you could put it in the scaling campaign. Because you have to understand when you put more budget, you reach a much broader audience. And that audience might be slightly less interested in your products. It doesn't mean that they are not gonna buy, but it is much harder to persuade them. On the other hand, when you're spending just little money, for these testing campaigns, you're going after low-hanging fruits, people who are most likely to convert. So if we go to the scaling campaign, 
right here we're gonna have this broad open targeting the budget for your selling campaign has to be much higher and what i would recommend is putting a budget that is more realistic here to get more volume and you could start with at least like 2x of your cost per purchase let's say your cost per purchase is 50 dollars in that case you could put 100 dollars and in this particular ad set, you're gonna have only the ads that they performed the best and it got more volume at your testing campaigns. And when you copy and you paste the ads in this scaling campaign, do not turn off the ads from your testing campaign. If they are working, keep them as long as they start dying out. So every single week in your testing campaign, what you are going to do is you are going to let only the audiences that they are working, let's say, you know, the lookalike and the interest is not working, is underperforming. I'm going to turn them off and I'm going to focus only on broad targeting. And in this broad targeting, I'm going to have only the ads that they are working. Let's say that, you know, carousel and image is not working. I'm going to turn them off and I will launch new ad creatives in this particular ad set. If I have more ad creatives, I will duplicate this particular ad set and I'm gonna call this broad open targeting testing new ad creatives. And in this ad set, I'm gonna have other ad creatives that I am launching in that particular week. And every single time when I see that an ad has gotten like five, at least I would say three purchases and return and spend is 2.5 and X and above, I will copy that ad, right? And then, okay, it doesn't allow me to copy, but basically I will copy this ad and I will go to my prospecting scaling campaign and I will paste it right here. Maybe one thing you will ask when I launch new ads in the scaling campaign, am I not gonna go to back to the learning phase? And yes, that is true, but the, you're gonna get out of the learning phase pretty quickly because if this campaign has a much longer longevity for the algorithms, they can learn much faster and they can optimize your campaign also faster. Now, the last campaign that I want to talk about is a very targeting campaign. And here's a mistake that a lot of advertisers do and still they are doing is that they are splitting up these retargeting audiences like they put at your cart initial checkout with purchases and back then maybe uh, it used to work and it actually kind of worked but at this moment because the ios 14 update has shrunken our audience size the best approach is to consolidate those retargeting audiences that's why i'm gonna have one single ad set so i'll have this ad set targeting all website visitors plus social media engagers in the last 180 days and in this ad set i'm gonna have creatives that they performed well in the prospecting campaign but i will slightly adjust them so for example i could change the text overlay if in my prospect campaign an image with a text overlay is working well then i'm gonna have in my retargeting campaign the same image but i will change the text overlay maybe in a review with five stars where i could use that proven carousel and in the ad copy i can add some urgency in that way i use the proven elements and patterns that the marketplace is responding well to in my prospecting campaigns i use them in the retargeting but with slight adjustments so it looks also new and fresh to them i covered a little bit about how to spend your budget more about the scaling campaign as for the retargeting campaign the budget that we want to use here is 15 to 20 percent from your entire marketing budget if your marketing budget is let's say six thousand dollars and you are spending $200 per day, that means your budget is going to be around $30. Now, if we go to the prospecting campaign, here the budget that you want to use is going to depend on your prices on your website. If you're selling more expensive items, in that case, you got to put more budget, something more realistic, because if you spend like five, ten dollars a day, it's going to take you months and like a lot of weeks until you find out what is working. So I tend to spend at least $20 per ad set per day to uh, sometimes $50 or even $100 per day. If the items that we are selling, the prices are like thousands and thousands of dollars. So this is kind of my entire ad account structure. I love using consolidated ad account 
back then when I used to have like multiple and multiple ad sets and multiple campaigns it was a mess and it was very difficult to manage that it sucked a lot of time and I was overwhelmed all the time now thanks for this algorithms it freed up a lot of time time that I can allocate for coming up with more creative strategies guide my clients on how to create them create more ad copies things that will really impact positively our campaigns this is as simple as it is this is how you structure an ad account and it works for all my client ad accounts regardless of their industry or how many products they sell on the store so it works for all of them now as you can see from my channel i'm a digital marketer and i help e-commerce owners to grow their sales using social media ads and techniques to optimize their conversion rate so if you are interested to get some help with those two components be sure to click on the link below to schedule a discovery call with me we will learn a little bit about what you do and you will find out more about us and if it's a good fit we might work together until next time i will speak to you soon